is a tutorial on how to make a simple life counter for your snap maps. This is useful for keeping your players playing without giving them unlimited respawns, but not having to restart the entire match when they die once. I'm going to start on an empty map and take you all the way through creating the life counter and creating a scoring system at the end of the match to give players extra points for lives they have left. The first thing we're going to need is a life variable, an integer. We're going to add a new one and call it lives. The initial value here is the amount of lives you want to give your players at the start of the map. I like to show how many lives left they have, so I decrease my amount by one than I want to give them. So if I wanted to give them three lives, I set this to two. You can set this to three, but later in the tutorial here, you'll need to change the comparators, and I'll show you when to do that as well. Next thing we're going to do is add a comparator. And this is under flow integer compare. All right, here we have the left hand and right hand side, and we're going to need to change this from a static variable or a static number to an actual variable. So on PC, I hold Control for options, and then go down here and hit either swap variable or hit X. And I'm going to select lives here, and I'm going to leave right hand side at zero because I'm comparing lives left. If you're comparing total lives, you'll want to increase this by one. We'll also need a end match, end game object, and we'll need a player proxy. All right, so let's link these together. When a player is killed, we need to decrease the lives they have. by one. We'll also need to add another event if they kill themselves. If they suicide, they jump off the map, or like a poison cloud gets them. That all counts as a suicide. So we'll link that to the same subtract. Now when this variable lives changes, it increases or decreases, we need to test this compare here. And this compare, if it is less than, we need to end the game and defeat. Alright, so when a player dies, if lives are less than 1, so if they're at 0, or in my case, they're at negative one, less than zero, and we end the game in defeat for the players. So that's all well and good. Now we need to make a scoring system so when they end a match and have lives left, we give them extra points. So this is our end game panel, and I'm just going to remove both of these for now. This is a little bit more involved. We're going to need a couple more things, and the logic is a little bit more complicated. The first thing we're going to need is another integer. This is just going to be a temporary count variable to compare the two lives and how many times we've reiterated. So we're going to make a new one, and we're just going to call it temp count. For the initial value, I'm going to leave it at zero. You'll want to set this up to one if you are counting total lives. We'll also need a, another comparator. We'll also need a repeater. We'll need a player proxy to give the players points. We'll need a message to show them they've received points. And we'll need a end game object to declare the game a victory. Alright, so let's set all these properties up and link it together. Under the repeater, make sure to set repeat infinitely to true. These other options don't matter much. Make sure delay is as low as possible, which by default it is. Then we need to link this 
on signal to our comparator. In our comparator properties, we need to change both sides here. Instead of static variables, we need to change them both to variables, and I did that with control X again. Set one to lives, and the other right hand side to temp count. Alright, so when lives is greater than temp count, we need to come down here and add one to it. If lives is greater than our count, we also want to give the players points, and let's make this a thousand points. I just want to make a quick addendum here. Uh, this will all work for a single player map, but if you want uh, the entire team of players to get a score and a victory, say like a cooperative match, then you'll need to add a player iterator in here between your give player score and your player proxy. So on greater than, link to player iterator, start iterating, and then link your player iterator for each player to your player proxy and give player score. And we can set that back to a thousand. Okay, uh, on for the rest of the video, you won't see this player iterator but just make sure that if you are making a cooperative match, you add that in there. And we'll want to show our message to them that they've received them. Okay. So now when lives is greater than zero, we show them a message and give them points. And then we also increase our temp count here. And since this is repeating infinitely when it's signaled, this is going to run again. When lives is greater than one now, we give them more points, show them another message. And this will repeat over and over until temp count is equal to or greater than, or then temp count is equal to or greater than lives. And in that case, we want to end the game in victory because we're done counting. So we go up to here and hit at most. And then end game in victory. Now we just need to link our ending event, in our case this panel, to a repeater and start it. A couple of more things we'll need to completely test this map is a life pickup, and we can make that just a container, a giant container. I'm going to make mine look more like a health pickup though. And let's make it green as well. We'll need to increase our life count by one when they pick it up. And we just reference our same life variable we made before. So when they pick this up, give them one extra life. And I'm also going to reset the respawn delay here so we can pick up multiple leaves to test. And we'll also need a system to remove lives or kill the player. So I'm going to add just another button. And we'll need a player proxy to kill them. And we want to set this to allow reuse. So now, when they use the button, kill the player. And we want to show how many lives we have left on the HUD. So we go into communication, HUD settings. And our, instead of our score here in the left, 
want to show our lives. So we set this to variable, and this is lives left in my case, and our lives variable. And we set this to active when we start the map by using a map object. On map started, set active. So that's everything we need to test. We have something to increase our lives, we have something to decrease our lives, we have our scoring system, and we have our life system. So let's run this map and test it out. Right, so we have two lives left up there in the top left. Pick up a helmet, now we have three. Pick up another, four. Everything's working there. Alright, so what happens when we die? goes down by one. Three lives left. Perfect. Okay, so we've made it to the end of the match, we've killed all the demons, and we still have lives left. We want to have an extra score at the end. There you go. 3,000 extra points for every life we have left. There's one problem with this system, however, and that's when you run into a case where you have lots of extra lives left. Since this repeater has a delay, and it always has a delay, you can't set this to zero. If you have a large amount of lives, let's say 50 lives left, and you run the map, and you reach the end, and you have all those lives left, that delay is still going to process for every life. So here we are. A thousand bonus points. A thousand bonus points. Sure. There we go. Finally. After all that, we get our 50,000 extra points. Alright, I hope this was helpful. Go use this to great effect in your own maps. And thanks for watching.